OK, welcome to the next section. Here we're going to revise some of the basic Java that you should have understood from the previous year. Let's have a look at this. We're going to introduce some new features that you might be unfamiliar to you. And I'm going to begin with this concept of static. Let's have a look at student. Let's look at teacher and student. Let's say that students have some attribute which is the same across all students, like uh, number of toes. So we can go uh, int number of toes. Now the thing is everyone has 10 toes so it seems a bit of a waste to have this same thing in every class so what we can do is say make it static and what that does is it what that does is it shares it across every instance so if I go public static okay and we can then say uh, student.show and we can say system.out.println uh, show dot um, what did I call it? I called it number of toes dot number of toes that's fine it's complaining about it because I've got the Java doc. Okay, and this is completely illegal. There you go. Number of toes is 10. Uh, now, if I have two instances, they will have the same thing. So I can make another student. Let's call this other student S2 is equal to uh, 9. And let's print the number of toes there. Let's go. Uh, show number of toes equals three. He's only got three toes. But this actually doesn't change it for this, this person. It changes for everybody. So if I now say system.out.println s2 dot number of toes You would think if this is an attribute, it would return 10, but because it's a shared attribute, it should return 3. Let's have a look at that. So it, it was 10, we change it to 3, and even though this person, this person is different from this person, because you've altered a shared attribute, they all have um, the same attribute shared. Okay, we tend to actually use these with values that don't change. Um, uh, something that's universal across things. We can also do this with methods. So, for example, we can have a static method. So, public static um, uh, say nothing system dot out dot print line. I am saying nothing. Okay. Public static void nothing. Okay. And this is a method that I can send not only to the to the to a student, I can say student uh, s two dot say say nothing. It's happy with that, that's compiling. Uh, I can actually say it to the concept. I can say student dot say nothing. Because in a static method, I can't access any of the variables. I cannot access, say, score. If I try and access score, because score equals three, I get an error. That's because I'm not allowed to access instance variables. I'm only allowed to accept access shared variables. So this is, say nothing is a shared method or a static method as we say technically. So uh, what's nice about the static method is you don't need an object to initiate them, you only need a class. So we can actually go public, so and this becomes very useful if we're writing what would be known as a procedure in another language. We can go public, static, void. Okay, let's go uh, show off lists. 
Okay, let's try and remember some Java. Let's say we have a, an array of strings uh, called names. And we're going to add them. Bob. Uh, Kerry. Now there are two ways of um, printing. Suppose we want to print all these names out. There's two ways of doing this. Uh, we can say, um, well, we can obviously go system dot out dot print line names zero system dot out dot print line names one. Oops, like that. That would be a very dumb way of doing this. Because then if we change the array size, it wouldn't work. But we can use a for loop. So we can actually say for int i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. We can get rid of that stuff. We can get rid of that. And instead of actually putting the number there, we put i. That would work. So let's just do this. So the the another useful function we can have is with source code, we can say toggle comment. That would just disables all this stuff. You know, it's in um, Bluejet. In NetBeans, it becomes gray. This isn't going to work. And it's going to call this uh, this static method, this procedure, which will then print out these names. Let's run that. We get the names printed out. Of course, you're all really object oriented people, so you realize there's an even easier way of doing this. We can go names for string uh, it in names. Print it. Okay. Now this is wonderful because you don't have to remember that arrays begin at zero. You don't have to work out that the uh, size of the array is the length of the array minus one. You just say for every item in the list. And this is going to be our preferred method of working for this course. There we go. We print them all out. Um, but supposing we're doing something else, we're going to look for a name in this list. So for example, we're going to look for string uh, the name. And what we want to do is say, is this name in this list? And we say, if it dot, notice I've got the thing, equals, equals um, the name. Uh, and what we might do is go, uh, let's make a Boolean to say we found it. We might go Boolean found equals false and then if we find it we say uh, found equals true at the end we say return found so that says we start off by assuming we haven't found it if we do find it we set the found to true and then we find whatever the result is and let's just check the bounces that's that that's that okay we're good and but uh, now we notice that show off list now needs a name and we want to go system dot out system dot out dot print line print uh, print line let's do print line show off lists uh, and let's look for Bob let's correct the spellings so we're going to call this method. This method is going to look up to see if the name here is equal to any of the names in this list. And if it is, it's going to return true. And it does find it, which is great. And let's find, let's not find it. Returns false. Equally good. Okay, let's look for, let's look for Adam. Now, if we run Adam, it finds it. But think about it. It's going through this list over and over again. And as soon as it finds it, it doesn't need to look at the ones afterwards. Yet, it still goes through the list. Now, we can actually um, uh, uh, solve these problems in two ways. The first one is we can use this thing called break. And what that does is it basically pulls the ejection cord and it gets out of that loop. 
Now, as soon as it finds it, it won't bother processing it. And we'll find this, we'll do this by going system out dot print line uh, looking at, so these printf, looking at percent s it and I'm going to move that up here. So what it's going to do is it's going to look at that and then if it finds it if it finds it found okay let's run that so this is the old way we're looking for Adam no we're gonna look for Kerry no we're gonna look for Bob let's look for Bob let's run this there we go it looked at Adam looked at Bob it found Bob but it still looked at Kerry okay if we do this another time looking for Adam it fire it still has to look at those two what we can do is stick the word break here and what this does is it breaks out of the loop if we run it now notice it as soon as it finds it it stops the loop and it gets out another way of doing this is to actually use return like this one we can go return um, found or because we know found is true we can just go return true let's run that and again it breaks out of that loop, which is very useful. So we've learnt about return in a loop, and we've read, uh, found out about break in a loop, and there's an equivalent one, which is called continue. So for example, supposing we have a, a very long method here, more, more code here, uh, lots code here. OK, but we want to bypass this code if it's, for example, null. So we can go if it equals null, continue. And continue is a bit like saying, you know, uh, go straight, uh, go straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 pounds. It basically goes back straight up here and it gets to the next one on the list. So we'll run that. Nothing's going to happen. But and again, it's another way of jumping over a lot of code that you don't need to do. This one goes, you know, you could actually call this back to square one and it would jump back up here, but it's called continue. Okay.